我们呃下一个演讲者他没办法到现场，所以他是提供录音片。不过后面会有一个 live session， 就是的，大家任何在现场，然后呃如果有什么问题可以直接直接问，用中文用英文，呃如果英文不行，我可以帮忙翻译。然后我们这边有 slide， 也可以如果不方便直接讲，也可以在 slide 里面贴问题。然后我们会<咳>跟大家反映，对，那啊、呃，下一个 topic 是 a new secret hash for the fileless malware。对，那欢迎欢迎是我们的 speaker， 等下的他的影片会播过来，谢谢。Hi, I'm Dennis from Kaspersky, and really nice to be here on the Hitcon Peace 2022. Thanks for the interest to the topic. Uh, what I mostly do in the Kaspersky is threat intelligence, reverse engineering, and sometimes trainings on the same matters. And I really think what topic this year has a real connection to the sub headline of the conference. So I will guide. Why? Because this attack has a really Apply so many techniques. We consider actual, modern, and I really hope, as a takeaway from the talk, your blue team, red team, reversing team would end up after these forty minutes with some ideas, some research ideas, and some、uh, tips and tricks for your、uh, future work and research. So、uh, let us slowly start. I understand mostly with the participants we don't share the same mother tongue, so I would start to speak、uh, slowly as far as I can. As you see, not a slower talker mostly, and really want to cover all this. Uh, attack step by step. Let us go. So, firstly, the plan for the next hour, thirty minutes. Let us before the bird view, before the overview of the attack. Let us firstly concentrate on the part which I considered the most interesting one. I would emphasize with ability. To work with the Windows event logs and the encrypted shell codes inside it, these techniques we never observed before, so we consider it as a brand new for this targeted malware. That's why the separated part of the talk would be dedicated. To this one, and after it, we would cover all the stages, stage after stage, from the commercial、uh, tool sets used by the attackers to the some free third-party tools, and for all the modulus to、uh, to the last stages. Last stages also not a single one. You would see two of them for the local area network. One and for the working with the real control service outside of the、um, infected networks. What else before the start? I want to mention. Want to mention a lot of anti-detection tricks, including the usage of the some esoteric compilers like NIM, Go, and also not so esoteric GCC and MinGV environment. So you would see all this auxiliary prepar preparation for the last stage Trojans, and also.、Uh, I would share the ideas why attackers decided to use some third-party code. Okay, so seems like a plan, and I propose to follow it. And after it, also I really hope we would have some time for the discussion for the、uh, Q and A. Firstly, before. I would slowly go into this new technique of keeping shell codes inside the Windows event logs. Let us take a look how usually malware use the logging, right? And the, actually, and the、uh, shell codes as well. Logging typically, it's、uh, if the malicious developer on the other side. Just prefer to debug not with a real debugger, but like a printf-like debugging with some messages. A lot of the messages would be in a binary code, 
we are analyzing as reverses, right? Why they are living within a release version? Maybe just keeping the to-do list to remove it later, maybe. Maybe just don't mind. Okay, let it be the messages. But I also have another idea why sometimes we made such a logging inside the malware. Imagine the operator takes the already tested model, but now it's time to deploy it in a real environment, real attack target. And as you could imagine, even tested in, in their own environment, everything could go wrong on a stage of the real infection. All the IDS IPS, all the network segmentation, whatever, could ruin all the plan. And operator really wants to know which stages are already executed and which stages are ne couldn't execute because of some error. Maybe it's also a reason for the some logging the typical malware logging exists to help operator to debug in the real life mode, in a production, we could say, right? Okay, anyway, sometime it exists. On a slide, you could see in a model in charge of steganography, just keep the name of the function and name of the parameters taken from the BMP files while the steganography decryption process, right? So sometimes it could help the analyst to understand what uh, happens. And once again, maybe it would help a tech operator to understand at which stage the infection chain was working. Also, uh, sometimes we saw an examples with the logging disappearing. So as the threat hunters, we are taking a look at some models real for years, actually for years. And we could see, oh, logging was there. Nowadays, no logging anymore. So sometimes it disappeared. Developers decide hmm, we don't need it anymore. Let's remove it. Time to describe the normal usage of the shell codes right? Where you could met the shell codes in infection chain. I suppose mostly in the infected documents, right? And during some reflective loading, so at some stages of the attack, mostly early stages of the attack, like an exploits or embedded code into the documents, whatever, the normal place for the uh, shell codes. What's the difference between the normal code and this kind of the code? It has to be position independent. What it means? Shell code couldn't enjoy the help of operating system a PE file loader, right? If you are speaking about Windows, it could do everything by itself. So no help from the side of the operating system mechanism. That's why some like on this screenshot, you can see all these tricks like uh, call next instruction, pop RCX in a uh, next instruction to get the current uh, value in RIP, the current address of executed instruction. So it nature of shell codes leads to some tricks inside with uh, code. Also a lot of the parsing of the process environment block and uh, uh, some executable Windows files for the same reflective loading and for the searching of the system libraries to get the addresses of operating system API functions. Also nobody wants to save some readable strings to help the researcher and to help the automated security systems. So a lot of usage of the some hashes of API function names instead of the names itself. Enough for the normal shell codes, agree? I suppose every one of us met it all the time. But, but, why not to connect? with two mechanism of the lodging and some small position independent shell code. What malicious engineer invented with time? Let us slowly get the idea. 
even if you never develop some drivers for Windows, well, for example, I uh, never develop any drivers, but I know what Windows event logs could keep binary data. So driver could not only write the message warning, error or information message to the event logs, but also dump some piece of binary data. Why this mini dump could help the driver developers to debug what goes wrong. Imagine you are a third party developer, I don't know, Logitech, whatever, and your user, your end user, just reply, uh, something goes wrong, and support could ask, could you please share this mini dump, and our uh, third line of support could research the reason for this issue. It's completely legit mechanism of keeping binary path into the event logs. After it, malicious engineer thinks, hmm, if it's binary, when I could keep shellcode over there as well. What could stop the malicious developer? Actually, nothing. So, after it, what they need? They need some mechanism to put it over there into event logs and to get it from here. And the main reason for all this development is since for ages, malware tried to hide itself from the plain sight, from the live researchers, from the automated system. File system is the most visible part, right? If malware keeping as a file, it would be detected in no time. That's why all alternative data streams, whatever, VMI subscriptions, Windows system registry, and now even Windows event logs as a places not so visible for the researchers and for the automated security systems, right? For sure, it exists on a file level. In case of our event logs, for example, it would be EVTX files, but in a proprietary format, and maybe security solution would consider mm, too time consuming to check with not so file system level artifacts for the malware. This is the idea behind the shell codes into the event logs under Windows. Enough words, let us go straight to the code. What we see here. Some allocation, first of all, right? 512,000 uh, bytes initially allocated and after read, developer just register the event source. Event source with the name K management service. I would name it KMS from now on. KMS, if you check your event log right now, if you are under Windows, you could check and you would see it's already existing source and it stands for the mm, registration for the licensing mechanism for the office product, for the operating system itself, etc. So, opening the existing event source. Okay, I got the idea. After read the second API function, Windows API function, name read event log. Read event log as usual. The suffixes A and W stands for the ASCII and white. You could just, please don't mind. It stands for the, let us use the white strings. The meaningful part is a read event log. Reading, I make some comments here. We are actually taking a look at the uh, uh, decompiled code already uh, after the uh, analyst uh, work with it. Right, all the renamings, all the structures created uh, for you before the screenshot was made. What is here? Please take a look at event logs sequentially forward, so from the former to the latter, and keep it in some allocated memory on heap. Right? If it's not enough memory, please realloc it. But you could ask me, hmm, okay, it's just a reading all the event logs provided by KMS. 
and you told us it's alleged. So, this code would just read not only malicious event logs, but all of them. True. But take a look how uh, it's uh, going further. It's uh, taken to the container, to the std string, stl container, only needed part of these logs. Take a look at the filter. A filter is event category. So, developer knows for sure normal KMS logs wouldn't use event category in the hexadecimal, it would be 4142. In ASCII, like on the screenshot, it's a AB. Never would use such a category. Only the custom logs from the malware would be use such an event category. Applying this filter, they would filter out all the legit KMS logs. Okay, so the resulting string would keep our encrypted shellcode after it. What else? But before we are reading this data, some model, some malicious model have to put it over there. For sure, for sure, the dropper. Dropper contains two resources, binary resources. So I suppose you, as me, see it all the time, keeping some data in the resources of the Windows Portable Executable. One resource for the launcher, launcher the module which would take the code from the event log and run it, decrypt and run it. We saw it on a previous slide. And one resource for the shell code itself. Uh, take a look. We would need a little bit more Windows API named report event. And report event would put the data into the event log. Uh, the arguments, interesting for us, it's once again category for one for two. You see, it's the same category A, B, and the type of the logging. It's just uh, information, not a warning, not a critical error, just an information. Please put it over there. And the third argument I want to emphasize here, it's the ID of the message. It would be incremental, Starting from the 1423, 1423 would be first ID of the first log message with a part of shell code, and incrementally all the other part of the shell codes, eight kilobytes long each of them, would be placed into our event logs. So I intentionally put on this slide the writer and the reader for the event logs, so you could see how it all happened. So, uh, once again, I consider this part of the mm, malware the most interesting one, due to the some no wise, some new ideas inside it. Never saw it before. Let us also take a briefly look inside the shell code. We already discussed show the code inside the shell codes are a little bit different from the normal PE. And as you could see here, familiar parsing of the PE file, it would be the next stage in our attack. Parse it, just uh, find in a, a system libraries needed APIs based by hash and running the uh, function with a hash found. So it just uh, if you would generate some shell code with your MSF Venom, you would see a little something similar to this picture. Okay, now enough for this feature of event logs. Let us slowly go to the bird view of the attack. What is besides this new mechanism? I would like to emphasize the usage of at least two commercial tools. The model of Cobalt Strike were detected in this case, and also the traces of the throwback and silent break are uh, everywhere in the models, like in the original file names for the DLL, the encryption, like in the throwback on the uh, 
old free version of the throwback models on the GitHub. So it uh, obviously was uh, in use. Also, besides the usage of uh, several commercial tools, a lot of auxiliary models uh, for the anti-detection. What I mean here? They try to use some a little bit strange compilers like a NIM and Go. I would show you the Go model. Well, NIM model is uh, something similar. To just go away from the detection, right? Thinking, okay, for some times usage of some not so common compilers would keep us from the detection. Well, I don't think it's uh, it's really happened, but anyway, please keep in mind nowadays some strange compilers were in use for anti-detection. I'm wondering would we get some Lisp uh, samples uh, for such a uh, task, but here in case of this targeted malware, Go and uh, NIM was the language of their uh, of their choice outside of C and C++. Also, two types of the Trojan, right? The point number three, two types of the Trojan. What I think about it for the lateral movement inside the local area network, they stand with a named pipe version of the Trojan. And for the host, which could really go outside to the real C2, they choose HTTP encrypted, HTTP based communication with the control server, with another Trojan and another command system. This is it. So we need now, we need to cover these three points, right? Usage of the some tool sets. Also, some interesting part of the auxiliary models, including anti-detection, decryption, whatever, and some last stages, which are more than one, you see? So, this uh, is a quite a complicated, right? Targeted malware, as usual. It's like, a, I don't know, like a chip with a different, but like a system on a chip. Uh, I could say with a real uh, interesting targeted attack. Okay, step by step, anyway, we could uh, cover it. Third-party tools. Also, maybe as we, you also uh, had an experience with the usage of some code from the GitHub. In this case, it was a black bone. A black bone, as you see it on a screenshot, quite an open on the GitHub. I personally met it several times in the malware. It's a for sure, it's not a malware by itself, just useful for the malicious uh, developers. Uh, I could tell what are some code snippets from the GitHub. It's not new. It happens all the time in our experience. But the simultaneously usage of two commercial tool set it's uh, interesting, it's interesting. Uh, it's not a typical picture. This is point I want to emphasize here on this slide. Why uh, we decided it's uh, presence of the black bone here. Take a look at this very typical uh, trampoline picture. If we would take out a look at the one way how to patch, how to patch legit model, during the DLL side loading, we would see the same picture. Let me describe it. They took legit file, Windows file, verefault.dll, verefault.exe, uh, .exe. It's uh, in charge of the um, error handling, Windows error handling, verefault.exe. They copy this legit file to the C Windows tasks. It would be uh, kept over there. And they dropped the library with a very specific name, where uh, wer.dll, into the same directory. So, familiar DLL search order hijacking, right? In the same directory, whitelisted legend file, DLL with a specific name. And inside this DLL, they don't want the verfault exe continue its normal execution to report some errors. No, no. They need to patch entry point of the verfault. And the patching is a completely familiar blackbone trampoline. Take a look. So some preparation in memory 
code, like on assembly level, it would mean uh, move uh, zero to uh, move needed address to the rocks and jump rocks. And the what is the uh, function to jump instead of the real entry point? It just it's a perfect function, I could say. Take a look. I name it wait and exit. It just a wait for single object of the real thread which is executed the main payload of the malicious DLL. So a uh, familiar way of doing things, a little bit funny, I could say. So instead of entry point of whitelisted ledger process, jumping to the waiting while malware end up its execution. Okay, some way of program uh, such a tasks, what, why no? Little bit funny, but possible. What else? So enough, uh, I don't want to spend too much time on um, uh, available uh, code, third-party code, because you could find its description or even source code on the GitHub. Let us slowly go to the custom code, to the anti-detection. In anti-detection, I want to, besides the several compilers, I want to emphasize the following techniques. Patching you see one way of patch legit process. I would also show you how they patch another Windows API function relating to the AMCI, anti-malware modern interface in operating system, and related also to the logging, to the event lo normal event logging. You would see. Also, site loading I also described a little bit, right? Take the legit file, copy it, put the malicious DLL in the same directory, and they are done. They had uh, some kind of persistent and way of running malicious code in the legit process environment. Okay, and the last but not the least, digital certificate. Digital certificate uh, of some named fast invest. While we are trying to search some legit uh, executables signed with the same digital certificate, actually we failed. So my expectation is that it's a certificate created only for the malicious models. I wasn't able to find any legit software with the same digital certificate. Maybe I just don't find it, maybe. But to my knowledge, uh, it's uh, not existing any legit software. Anyway, to get the malicious file looks more legit, some digital certificate exists. Okay, let's go to the next way of patching. And as you could imagine, malware want to be silent. They want only their own, their own event logs with a shell code, but they completely don't want the normal event log of the malware execution. For the incident response, for the threat hunters, no, no, they just patch with the auxiliary models the functions like a notification register, uh, ETV stands for the Windows event uh, logging mechanism, so ETV event register, etc. All the normal API function related to the event logs patched with a different part of the code, which wouldn't let the messages appear to the uh, event logs. Nice? Yes, I think so, I think so. The same with the MCLI related functions, to be a little bit more silent. But I could say the part with the AMCI, mm, I think it's a little bit commodity, because in uh, some frameworks, it's already like a metasploit, it's already, uh, to my knowledge, the uh, existing ability to avoid AMCI, right? So I wouldn't consider it as a, or something new. So new is uh, putting shellcode into event logs, but patching AMCI, it's uh, existed functions. Uh, patching the not notification, it's also interesting part. And on a screenshot, you see the Go, auxiliary model code, we would came to it in more details, and uh, uh, you would see how it helps them to hide a little bit. Okay, so this is the Go wrapper for the next stage. The next stage is the Cobalt. What we see here? First of all, it uh, came to our site, it's some base64 
actually it's a, a four time <laughs> base 64 and with encrypted binary data some part of the next stage a hundred of such parts would be debased four times each and combined with each other in a some not linear order and after it decrypted with the IS algorithm with the block cipher okay we wrote a script and we get the next stage it's uh, interesting but more interesting over there it's uh, take a look is into domain i named this function so auxiliary model checks if this model is uh, in, uh, into the domain if it's not into the domain if it's some home user nah i wouldn't continue i only need the user inside some domain Okay, and resolve patch events. I promise you on the previous slide to show some patching with a goal. Here I describe the concatenation and decryption. Let us take a look at the patching. Looks like this. So we use some uh, lazy type of the function pointers in Go, and you see some changing real function address to the function provided by the melee factors. After read, no functions from the ETV mechanism, event logging windows mechanism, would be real coded for this process, for this were fault, right? For another process, logging would be okay, but in this process it's patched. So it's not a system-wide patching, it's a process-wide patching, to my understanding. Nice, okay, so I like the choosing of the uh, compiler. It was a Go 1.18, so the new one, with a registry-based coding convention, and we were able to distinguish all these runtime function and understand and decrypt the next model. It was interesting, interesting part of the auxiliary models. Now time for the last stages, right? We already emphasize the most interesting event logs mechanism. We spend some time on uh, our uh, third-party code. We just describe one auxiliary model with a not so common compiler. With a, by the way, new model would be uh, a little like this, but in a different compiler, like a Go model. And now time for the last stage. Interestingly, the LAN version, which I named based on named pipe, it's a, a passive version. It means it's just waiting for the connection. It wouldn't just throw some packets, just waiting. Nice, okay, nicely written. And they're really fond of injection. As you could imagine of all the previous talk, they are fond of logging injection into the different processes are also their love. They inject everywhere, and what I want to emphasize, it was a good research before the uh, infection, because one, uh, one DLP system was in the infrastructure. They, with some previous models, see the process list mm -hmm. DLP with a name like this. They register the web domain with a similar name like this DLP system, and use this web domain as a C2. I could say it's a good preparation, right, for the attack. So even with a Trojan used HTTP encryption connection to the real C2s outside the organization, the traffic would be like it would come from the ERP process, right? Model is injected over there, and the web domain name would be like the name of the DLP. Interesting, I love it. Among the interesting comments uh, is the interesting one of the comment is user active. Please uh, active. Please give me the amount of time uh, after the last user input. So operator could check mm -hmm. 15 minutes of inactivity. Maybe maybe user goes away and now it's uh, more secure to do something with the host. Also good uh, comment. Some randomization of a sleep time. Mm, it could, I could say it's uh, nice to add uh, some uh, not linear way to connect to make an activity to make the uh, maybe incident response a little bit harder. But in this case, sleep type randomization was uh, uh, they just multiply 
the random amount of time uh, to the uh, from the one of zero dot nine to one dot one. So randomization was a quite a uh, uh, light one. The difference between the connection time was not crucial, I suppose, for the IR. Okay, you see some uh, features of the different last stages. Let us take a look at uh, them a little bit more. It's a common system, uh, right? And what is uh, inside? In case of HTTP, uh, also interesting part is a randomization of the C2. If in an encrypted configuration data, Several control servers exist. It's divided by the sign like this. And the algorithm would take a random control server from the list. Okay, one more randomization could be useful for the malicious developer. And among the fingerprinting for the target, they take a uh, machine grid from the Windows system registry and also a fingerprinting uh, would include uh, is the process has the SCA debug privilege for the privilege escalation or uh, interesting part of the uh, fingerprinting and one more thing why we uh, consider code is related to the throwback encryption, encryption idea software-based encryption is quite the same like in the old version or free version of the throwback existing on a, uh, GitHub. In the case of HTTP Trojan, mostly uh, the common system is uh, quite short. Uh, you see it uh, on your screens. I love with 99, uh, terminate everything so they just keep it at the bottom of the list. But, but it looks like a uh, you know, some kind of constructor, some version of HTTP Trojan would contain more profound common system, like in the case of our version with the named pipes. So they could choose the um, media for the commons named pipes or encrypted HTTP connection and combine the common system you see, it's like I could imagine some repository from which they could compile a different version of Trojans like a constructor. Okay, in case of uh, uh, pipes, the named pipes, name uh, named pipes, they choose a name as a monolith. But I suppose typically uh, such kind of models created with a graphic user or user interface uh, constructors, and I really suppose uh, the operator could choose whatever name for these uh, pipes. I wouldn't expect it's a hard coded for all the uh, uh, cases, but RC4 key uh, for the binary files. For the binary files, the target would observe in a, a blue team would observe in infrastructure name of the pipe and RC4 key would be hard coded, but I would expect on a um, uh, on the side of developer, it could be easily changed with a, a graphic user interface constructor to another name and a, a key. And the common system is a really profound, a dozens of them. I couldn't take them all on a, a screenshot, but uh, you see on the previous slide, it was, I don't know, dozens of the comments, nothing more. Here, it's uh, much more uh, of them, but as I mentioned, the comments could migrate from the different versions. It's uh, regarding the uh, last uh, stage. So, I think it's enough for my monologue. Beautifully, this year, I'm not in uh, uh, Taipei. I really wish to be, uh, but uh, I'm for sure available for the Q&A. You could contact me now or you could contact me or uh, pinging me online after the event. And I really hope I uh, would uh, came another year if the committee would approve uh, some topic uh, I for sure uh, would propose. And what I want to wish to us all, the name is uh, our HitCon Peace 2022. Let me just uh, wish to us all uh, Peace 2022, Peace 2023, 2024, and so on. Let it be all around the peace, not around the, like in a sub-headline, not around the survival, but 
let there be peace uh, in different parts of our not so big world. So now I hope this part from this targeted malware I emphasize in this really short amount of time was uh, quite interesting. And now I really want to see some questions about it. So thanks for your time and see you. Uh, yeah, I have one question. Uh, so you mentioned that this there is a malware that was using these techniques in the wild, right? You mentioned Cobalt. Is right. this the only family of the malware that uh, is using this uh, fileless? Because uh, fileless malware per se, it's not really that new, but this particular technique seems to be new, like Lurk in 2015 was using fileless techniques as well. Uh, have you seen other uh, uh, malware strains utilizing the same techniques, or were you were mostly talking about the, the Cobalt? Uh, cool question. Actually, among the uh, already known last stages, besides the Cobalt strike, there is also a silent break, right? So Silent Break has a GitHub repository. Uh, throw back, it's uh, just available, old, available part of the code from them. But, but take a look, the Cobalt is like a next stage. All the stuff with the Windows event logs, with the decrypting binary data from Windows event log, it's a little bit separated. I couldn't be sure it's a part, uh, really a part of Cobalt Strike, right? So it's a preparation, but it was so interesting to see such kind of usage on Windows event logs. So I decided to, uh, to describe it. And uh, so far, I couldn't be sure, but my theory so far, it may be the part of the uh, commercial products from the X silent break, but anyway, I couldn't be sure because I don't have the uh, reliable information. So maybe uh, the providers of commercial tools invent such uh, methods, not an operators of a targeted attack. It's possible. Uh, so I prefer so far to call all this uh, amount of activity I described as a monolith just after the name of the uh, named pipe. So you think it's a part of the commercial product that basically wraps the Cobalt Strike and maybe uses the Cobalt Strike backends? Not really part of the, like, in a wild attacker toolkit, but more like a commercial tool, is it? It's for sure in the wild. So the activity was registered in the wild, uh, for sure. That's uh, how we know it. Uh, but once again, the beacon, it's the next stage, it's inside, right? After all the shell codes, decrypting, there would be the Cobalt Strike Beacon. Regarding the question of the, is it commercial or not? It's a just, please, please uh, hear me once again. It's just uh, uh, my thoughts, because I couldn't tell you I get the code of this commercial tool. I don't get it, I don't bought it, right? I just think such a kind of coding could, and when I see, such a last stages near it, it could be. So it's possible, but it just please consider it as a, some speculation from the researcher, uh, nothing more. But I love the technique anyway. Whatever author is behind, I love the technique. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Any other questions? Have you? Uh -huh. Oh yeah, we, we have one question on... Uh, online portal, Please. so I will, I will just read it. Please. Is it possible that a fileless attack happened without logging and without web connection? 
Web connection, they need actually web connection because downloaders are on board. If we are speaking precisely about visa check, without online at all, visa check wouldn't work. Uh, uh, but for sure, if in the prior operators deploy all needed models in uh, some files places like uh, VMI subscriptions, like in TFS alternate data st uh, streams, or like in this case, in the binary part of Windows event logs, if all is available on site, right, on premise malware, it would become uh, possible. In this case, they need connection and also they would need connection to the uh, control server in case of the HTTP trojan. In case of named pipes trojan, used for the lateral movement, it for the walk inside the organization, infected organization uh, perimeter. So only local area network is needed. Mm, this is it. This is it. Please let me know if I'm answered. I could elaborate further. Ayod, Chitada Wintima. And one of the artifacts in the code was actually that they were checking if the executed, if the user, if the malware was executed under a user within a domain, right? So they were not interested in the machines that are not part of the domain. So do you yes. think this is basically reveals the attacker's intentions that they target particular organization or they just wanted to have like higher value machines? I think it's the intentions are not interesting in some home user. And maybe if employee just take the laptop, the business laptop to home and no VPN connection to the organization, no domain, nah, not interesting at all. So I think it could be a sign of their intentions uh, to attack some corporate environment, nothing more. I didn't observe any mention of precise environment. By the way, who could stop them by checking precise domain, right? If it was be targeted only for one organization, they could just name it. Let us check it's into the domain and the name of the domain is like this. Not the case, only checking inside the domain, we are interested. So in the corporate environment, home environment, no active directory, no domain, no go. Also a good part of the checking. I also uh, like this one and intentions. So my answer would be intentions are taking a look only at the some organizations. Okay, so uh, more like possibly a ransomware threat actor who might be targeting organizations and regular machines would be of the less interest, something like that, right? You could compare, but inside this campaign, uh, no encryption functionality at all, no encryption, only stealing of the data. So the last stage was just trying to get the information, but I didn't observe any functions to encrypt or some commercialization of their effort, not the case this time. Hmm. Interesting. So the intent, likely the information collection, and based on the domain checking, information collection from organization. And no yes, yeah. other... Yes, they took... Mm -hmm. Agree, completely agree. So they would took, as I described, machine ID during the fingerprinting of them, as usual, all the network settings. And after it, using the operator's commands, uh, maybe it would go for the more precious data in a... Uh, database management system, some documents, maybe. Yep. So uh, we have one more question here. Is Could cool. mobile Please. devices be targeted by this at, uh, fireless attack as well? Like... By this precise, ta this uh, targeted attack, to my knowledge, is only so far aiming at uh, the PC operating system. I didn't observe any Android or iOS version. But I like the question because lately, maybe you're familiar with the Scramble Cross Trojan family, and uh, we found lately the version, for example, for Linux. So the trend to spread their presence on the different platforms is for sure already here. 
but in this case, I didn't see so far any Android or iOS versions. But interest to different platforms are for sure growing up. So the, uh, the last finding I really love was the Linux version of the Scramble Cross. Okay. Thanks a lot for your answers. It was a great pleasure. And Yep. Yeah, it was really a great pleasure. Could I could I ask one question of the hit hitcon? Maybe sure. is there any chance you would cancel with uh, one week quarantine in Ch Taipei? Because I really I uh, I will to fly, but all this quarantine sitting in a hotel and have a, a, a work days yeah, in the hotel. Finger, fingers, yeah, fingers crossed that it's going to improve for next next year so if it's now three days only and maybe for next year it's going to be like even better so yeah fingers crossed um, fingers crossed so let's yeah. just hope that yes it would be so thanks thanks for the interest and hope to see you All right. again alive. thank you yeah it was a very exciting talk that's again here uh denise uh thank you she won uh minimum 这次必须要被隔离 所以他们没有办法可以到, 所以就明年, All right, thank you, 谢谢。